All right, we're live. And I think Jim just joined us. Excellent. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Lupus LA's News from the Lab, where we're bringing you inside uh, what I like to call breaking lupus research news. Um, and my phone blew up last week with friends and family sending me articles about the latest breakthrough in lupus. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure if we can call it a full breakthrough yet, um, but joining me today are Dr. Caroline Jeffries, uh, Associate Professor of Medicine at Cedars uh, Sinai, and uh, from another part of the house, Jim Johnston is here, who is the Chief Scientific Officer at Impact Bio uh, and a T-cell expert. So what we're talking about here is called Chimeric Antigen Receptor T-cell uh, Therapy, CAR-T Therapy. Um, and I'm going to let you guys sort of explain exactly what that is and why um, the internet blew up for all lupus patients in the last week. Caroline, welcome. Jim, welcome. Sure. Thanks, Adam. And I'm sorry, guys, that my, my voice is a little bit hoarse. I managed to get COVID last week, so there you go. Um, yeah, maybe I'll kick this off. I mean, uh, so CAR-T therapy, as Adam mentioned, um, is a way of basically engineering your own T cells so that you can put them back into a person, a patient, and then the T cells will go after whatever you've engineered them to, to target and kill. And, and in the case of this specific therapy, the T cells are engineered to go after um, B cells, a particular receptor on the surface of B cells. And this therapy has been developed for lymphoma and is very successful and FDA approved in, in lymphoma. And then um, a team over in Germany um, has tried this in five patients, um, five lupus patients, um, to basically see if this therapy could target B cells and um, basically put the, the patients into remission. And, and B cells are the cells in your body that produces um, the autoantibodies that are so pathogenic in lupus. Um, and there's been a number of different therapies that have targeted B cells and they've been, you know, somewhat, somewhat efficacious, um, but not like fantastic for all patients. Only a subset of patients have responded to them. So this therapy was aimed at um, younger patients. So um, I think they ranged from 18 to 24. There were five of them. Um, they all had lupus nephritis. They all had a CDI of eight or greater. So they were, they were pretty sick patients and they had um, been unresponsive to a number of different therapies that they tried. Um, and so what the investigators did, and this is how CAR T cell therapy works, is they took out the blood from the patients they purified a subset of immune cells called T cells, and then they engineered those T cells to go fight the B cells and put them back into the patient. And the remarkable thing is, is that after three months, um, their nephritis was better. Their C dye scores were basically zero or two. Um, they felt much better um, and their autoantibodies were gone. And then, for, so all the patients have been followed out now over six months. One of the patients is actually 18 months post this therapy and she's still in remission. So it's a, it's a remarkable, it's a remarkable story. And um, I, I mean, too early to say, is it a cure or anything like that? But it is a remarkable story um, and a, an remarkable achievement. And, and do we think that, um, is this a therapy that would need to be repeated or I guess we just don't know until we follow these patients for a longer period of time. Yeah, Jim, do you want to take that? In the case of um, lymphoma, in the majority of patients who get complete remission responses, they seem to be durable uh, way beyond, beyond two to five years. In fact, there was a, a, ten, a 10 year follow up on the first patients who, who were treated. You know, and they're still in remission 10 years later. So, you know, fingers crossed that we would see a similar um, impact in lupus. But as you say, it's much too early to, to um, uh, make those conclusions. And as, as Caroline said, the first patient is only out to 18 months. 
and it's a very small cohort from a single center. You know, so while the, the data provides a lot of hope, um, I think we have to be uh, very cautious as, as well. And I'm assuming the treatment itself, I, I mean, I read that uh, you have to do chemotherapy prior to treatment to, I guess, wipe out um, a certain set of cells. But I, I mean, how grueling is the treatment to get you from point A to point B? Well, you know, there's psi flu, um, we call it preconditioning. The idea uh, is to actually create room so that when you put the therapy in, um, it, it has space to, to expand. And they, they saw that in, in all of these patients. And, you know, the, the psi flu therapy does deplete lymphocytes, um, you know, and other um, immune cells. So it can leave the patients susceptible to infections, et cetera. But you, what we find is, and is being reported in this study as well, that the monocytes and neutrophils and other immune cells do rebound pretty quickly after two weeks. Um, so, you know, patients can tolerate this compared to, you know, se severe lupus patients of pain that they're in, et cetera. Um, you know, I think um, the side flu preconditioning treatment is, is very well tolerated. Well, Dr. Adam and, and um, you know, Jim is very much a T-cell biologist and I'm a, you know, we're, we're, we both come from very different aspects of the immune system. But um, I think what's amazing about this is the fact that the B cells are coming back, but they're coming back as naive B cells, as a population that isn't auto-reactive. Um, and I, I think that's probably kind of one of the most remarkable things about this, this therapy so far that they've seen. I mean, it could be, you know, myself and Jim have discussed this at length. Um, his company are making CAR T, CAR T therapies. And, you know, obviously a lot of these companies are interested in, in this finding as well. But, you know, maybe part of the reason that this has been so efficacious or positive is that the, the T cells will go into the tissues and they'll basically target B cells that are in tissues. And, and that's probably something that B cells aren't doing, uh, sorry, B cell antibodies aren't doing. Um, so that could be one of the reasons why it's, it's so remarkably positive. So it's more of a fire hose where you're really, you're clearing out everything. You're really starting from a place of something yeah. and, and essentially reteaching your body how to behave correctly. Yeah, and they use an interesting um, uh, phrase in the paper about resetting the, the immune system. And I think, you know, looking at the data, um, it, it's fairly encouraging that, that they may have done that. And I think Jim is right. We have to be very cautious about it. Um, it's only 18 months for one patient. Um, so, you know, it'll be interesting to see that undoubtedly there will be more studies in this space. Um, you know, in different centers. And I, I think that will kind of be the proof of the pudding, as they, as they say. What do you think sort of a realistic timeline, if you're the lupus patient out uh, watching us live, uh, to, to be able to think, oh, maybe I can have access to this therapy, um, either through a clinical trial, because I, I think that's really important that there may be um, availability now of more cl clinical trials, but what's the run-up for that? And then what's the run-up for something that says, hey, this really does seem to work. When is it available, you think, to, to more people? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, I, I think, uh, I mean, I mean, a number of people have already approached um, rheumatology at Cedars about running clinical trials, whether, whether it's taken up, I don't know that some of the big lupus centers are, are certainly looking at it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's in a very expensive therapy is the other thing, because you're taking your own cells out and putting them back in again. Um, it, it may be suitable for a, a, a specific subset of lupus patients, ones that are refractory to everything else um, and that have, you know, organ specific disease. Um, I mean, Jim, is, is, you probably have another perspective on this as well. Yeah, I'm, you know, the companies that are in this space in lymphoma are looking very carefully at this. Um, and I know of one company that's putting an IMD uh, submission in later this year. 
to start to treat lupus patients. But I think we have to be cautious because the, that will allow them to treat a small subset of patients. And then they'll have to go back to the FDA to say, this is our data. We'd like to now run a larger trial. So I think it might be a year, two years from now before clinical trials um, give, give uh, opportunity for uh, quite a number of patients to, to become uh, eligible. And then beyond that, I think it could be three years out and this might then be approved if the, if the data reflects what we're seeing in this paper. Um, but that's best case scenario. And, you know, I think cost is certainly one thing. I think if more patients are treated, I think we'll find that the costs associated with this kind of therapy will reduce over time. Um, but if these patients remain in remission for prolonged periods, I think one can begin to justify um, costs um, associated with giving patients their lives back. Well, and it's not cheap to be a lupus patient these days. Exactly. That was the, that's the other thing. I mean, you know, if you're not, if insurance companies aren't paying out year after year or month after month for, you know, standard treatments, then, you know, over the life excuse me, over the lifetime of a patient, you, you more than recruit the, recruit the costs. Mm -hmm. And as Jim says, giving patients back their, their lives and their well-being is, is key. And I do we think this... one, of the, one of the interesting things in the paper is, and it's something that came up at this meeting um, that I was at last week, is, you know, we're always looking at targeting, basically trying to stop the disease. And, and from clinician's standpoint, they're looking at like, you know, how patients are doing clinically. But they, they, they don't necessarily always ask, how are patients feeling? And there was a great session at this meeting talking about pain and um, it kind of really brought home to people in the audience, you know, that that's the question we need to be asking. And one thing about this study was that the fatigue, fatigue reported by the patients um, was completely gone. So that, that was promising, you know, to me that like it's also got a positive effect on how patients are feeling. I, I'm sure that everybody listening out, out there is, uh, is excited about this, especially that. And I think, yes, if more doctors said, how are you feeling? I think that would be, uh, and listen to the answer. That's the other, uh, the other, <laughs> the other side note to that. But I, I think we all get so focused on our lab tests and our lab results and and I do think there is an element of the, the lupus patients that I know, they, they inherently know, are they doing well or are they not doing well? And I think that's a really important, important point. And uh, well, listen, I, I appreciate you guys joining us and shedding some light. I know Lupus LA is going to have any updated information that we can on this and certainly any clinical trials or opportunities for people to try this out, I think, um, you know, we'll, we're going to be on top of that. So, um, and when there's more information, we'll have you guys back and, and, uh, and learn more. Sounds good. Happy to. All right. Appreciate it. Feel, Happy to help. Feel better, Caroline. Thanks so much. Thank you.